Karen Jetley Life. Hi guys, welcome to my channel and in this video tutorial I am going to explain you how we can calculate the average waiting time for round robin schedule. Okay, so guys before we calculate the waiting time or average waiting time, so what we have to do is we have to prepare the Gantt chart. Okay, and how did I made this Gantt chart for that you can refer to my another video about turnaround time and round robin scheduling. I will leave the link of that video in the description. Okay, so guys now let us calculate the average waiting time for round robin scheduling for this scenario. So what is waiting time guys? Waiting time is start time at what time it gets the processor minus arrival time at what time process arrives in the wait queue at what time the process arrives in the wait queue. Okay, so guys here is process P1 here is process P1. So what is the starting time for P1 that is time 0 and what time P1 arrived it arrived also at time so this is the first now p1 burst was three seconds and our time slice is two seconds so p1 processed itself for two seconds and how much is left one how much burst for cpu still is pending is one so where p1 will go pair p1 will go p1 again at time two it will go to the wait queue it will arrive in the wait queue at time right so then after this now see when again p1 got the cpu attention p1 got the cpu attention at time 8 at time 8 that is the start time for the next slice okay then at what time it arrived in the wait queue before this it arrived at time 2 so 8 minus 2 8 minus 2 so p1 first time slice second time slice and p1 completes its execution okay so this is the start time minus arrival time initially it came in the wait queue at time 0 and second time it came in the wait queue at time 2 why because still it had some processing which was pending and after two two bursts after two time slices it finished its execution now let's go to p2 let's go to p2 p2 arrived at time 2 and when it arrived at the same time it got the processor okay so start time 2 arrival time 2 so when it finished 2 seconds when it finished 2 seconds how much was left still 4 seconds was still left so where would p go p would go again in the wait queue so at what time p2 went in the wait queue p2 went at time 4 p2 went arrived in the waiting queue at time 4 okay this is gone then again at what time p2 got the cpu attention at time 9 p2 got the cpu attention that is start time new minus the arrival time what is the arrival time for p2 now the new arrival time will be 4 9 minus 4 okay so here p2 finished the second burst also then again two second is left two second is left where p2 will go and wait where p2 will go and wait again p2 will go to the that uh, wait queue right so at what time it left for the wait queue at time 11 then again what time p2 P2 got the CPU attention again at time 15. So that becomes the start time minus when it went to the waiting queue. 15 minus 11. 15 minus 11. Okay. So P2 also finished. Now coming to the P3. So P3 arrival time is 4. Right. And what time? Arrival time is 4. And what is the start time for P4? 4. So arrival start time minus arrival time 4 minus 4 okay so when it finished the first slot still two seconds were left so where it would go and wait again it will go and wait in the waiting queue so that at what time at what time p3 went to the waiting queue it was at time 6 it was at time 
six. Okay. Then at what time P three again got CPU? P three got again got CPU at time eleven. So what we get is eleven minus six. What we get is eleven minus six, and this also finishes, and P three also finishes. Now then coming to P four. What is the arrival time of P four? Six. What is the start time of P four? That is also six. Six minus six. Okay. So after two seconds, how much burst is still left? Three. So where would it go and wait? It would go and wait in the wait queue. Okay. So at what time? P four. At what time went to the wait queue? It went at time eight. It went at time eight. And at what time again? P four got the CPU attention. It was time thirteen. So thirteen minus eight. Thirteen minus eight. Still one second of CPU. One second of the CPU burst is left for process P three. So then again, and for P four, then again at time fifteen. Again at time fifteen, it arrives in the. Again at time fifteen, it arrives in the wait queue. Okay. Then again, at what time it gets the CPU attention? It gets the CPU attention at time seventeen. So starting time seventeen, the new arrival time for this is fifteen. Seventeen minus fifteen. Okay. So for this, what is the average total wait time for P one? Zero. Eight minus two is six. Zero plus six gives you six. So what is this? Zero five. Five plus four gives you nine. So what is this? Zero eleven minus six gives you five. Okay. So this is zero thirteen minus eight. Thirteen minus eight is five. Five seventeen minus fifty. Five plus two gives you seven. Five plus two gives you seven. Now let us calculate the average waiting time. So average waiting time will be. Total wait time divided by total number of processes. That is six plus nine plus five plus seven. So total number of processes are four. So what it is? It will be twenty-seven divided by four. That is six point seven five. That will be the average waiting. Time for round robin scheduling. So, guys, what happens in round robin scheduling? Process arrives. Okay, then it gets the time slot. If still something is left, it goes to the that queue, wait queue. Okay, and wait for its next turn. Okay, again some other process comes. CPU context switches. Okay, so if still the processing is pending, again it will go to the wait queue. So they, it will work in a round fashion. It will work in a round fashion. So that's why we call it as round robin scheduling. And this is how you calculate the average waiting time. So guys, I hope I made myself clear to you. And guys, if you like our videos, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading more and more lectures on IT related topic. And all of you guys, thanks for watching and stay tuned.